Good day! We are on episode 24, probably. It's probably 25. I did not forget to close the door. <laughs> oh, mother truck and doors. Um, oh, God. Well, by the time this video comes out, the video will already be out, but yeah. Crazy shit happened yesterday. Well, what I found out. The morning is far too early for my taste. Oh, how lovely. Oh yeah, we gotta go run with Emmy again. Blech. It doesn't help that I had trouble sleeping last night. Oh, were you, ha were you having lewd dreams? No. Oh. There were simply too many things to think about. My mind refused to slow down. Ah, oh, you, you were with Emmy because of a leg thing. Instead of replying the... Instead, instead, I replayed the rooftop, the park, and everything else over and over in my mind. There's a small part of my mind. In the back of my mind, I feel shook. I butchered that lyric. Mind is still paranoid that this has all been some kind of joke. That I'll meet up with Emmy at the track and she'll act like nothing happened yesterday. You're not the only one thinking that. Pushing these thoughts to the back of my mind, I throw on my running clothes and open the door. Oh god, that Maggie AMD. It's beautiful. Emmy's waiting for me with her usual smile. You're late. Piss off. No, at least you're not early today. So, we're on time? Are you tired or something? I find myself ruefully rubbing my, the back of my head. Something like that, yeah. Lots to think about and all that. Emmy giggles at my mild under understatement, probably. Yeah, I didn't sleep that well either. Oh, really? Why? I was actually g glad you weren't early, because I wasn't early either. Hypocrite! I wonder if the same thing kept us awake. Probably not. The image of her weeping face passes through my mind. What kept you? What kept you up there? Oh, God. I don't think that is something that we should ask, because she'll obviously just be adamant about it, and then there'll be that nothing happened, and then crazy things will happen, legs breaking, oh, God. <laughs> I should have used something else. Um, bodies breaking, and then, yeah... Emmy's expression falters, but she quickly notices my curiosity and forces a smile. Well, I wasn't worried, at least. Well, his face. Nothing important. She's obviously not telling me something. Exactly. But don't dwell, dwell into it. Please don't. The question is, should I press the issue? We pressed it last time, so I suppose this should work? Something's clearly been bothering her for a while. I want to help her, but would it just come off as me being nosy? No, y you are worried, yes. Don't mistake your intentions, but to her, she'll just act like you're being nosy. She's got to know I care about her, though. Okay. Oh, God. Are you sure? If something's bothering you, I'm here to help you sort it out. Don't say help. Don't don't say help. Just say, I'm here if you need me. Just say that. Don't say help because she'll probably take that in the wrong way. And then she'll come back on you again. Or not. I mean laughs then, but it's not her usual laugh. There's an edge to it that seems all bitter. Damn her. Sort it out. Ooh, I think that was worse than help. I'm not sure it can be sorted out, Hisao. An almost grim smile crosses her lips. It's like a smile of resignation. Rough. I don't think you could help me anyway. That hurts. I don't want to say it, that it hurts to her, but it does. Doesn't she realise I want to be there for her when things go wrong? Oh god, so many mushy dust. Well, I won't push you on the matter then. But I'm here for you if you decide later that you'd like to talk about it. <laughs> That'll never happen. It might help. Hey, what the hell? No, no, no. 
I can see the debate raging behind enemies in my eyes. Jesus. It seems like she wants to tell me, but she's not sure whether or not she can. Hey, forget about it for now, okay? We got running to do. The mention of running, something that she can handle, brings Emmy back to her usual self. Right. Hurry up and stretch out his how. We gotta get moving. I'm giddy with anticipation. She takes off like a shot, far quicker than I'm used to. Still, I try to keep pace with her, recklessly testing my limits. Oh god. It gives me a feeling of freedom, like my heart is no longer important. Oh god. Well, then again, I never value my heart to begin with. I don't acknowledge it. But then again, I don't have a rib via like you do. I find myself wanting to laugh, filled with the feelings of moving beyond what I once called my boundaries. My boundaries? The nurse's warning to not overdo things echo in my mind, like, like oak. Oak's echoing words or voice. You can't use a bike here! <laughs> oh, God. For some reason, I'm obsessed with using a bike in a, in a building. I don't know why. And I disregard them. I wish I could. <laughs> this feeling I have, this willingness to risk a heart attack for something so trivial as a, as a morning run, feels out of character for me. But is it? Or rather, should it be? I've got a weak heart, sure. It'll never be capable of the kind of speed and endurance Emmy's capable of. Though I probably wouldn't be able to get that good even if I had a healthy heart. Oh god, please stop mentioning the word. I feel dizzy. As we round the final bend, I feel my legs screaming in protest. But for the first time, I ignore them. Oh god, the music stopped. Heart attack, ahoy! I accelerate to the finish at the sprint, nearly catching up to Emmy. That was never going to happen, of course. Still, I feel surprisingly good. Oh sure, my legs feel like they're about to catch fire and I'm having trouble staying upright. Oh god. But there's been a shift of some sort today. And it's all thanks to the girl grinning at the finish line waiting for me. That felt a little faster than usual. My comment is met with a grin and a shrug. Can't you think I would... Can't have you think I was going to go softer than you now, can I? But you managed to handle it just fine. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Probably. I would have done it without you. Still feeling the high from the run and, and moved by a surge of gratitude, I seize Emmy in a hug. Thanks. Really, I'm not just saying that. I mean, you're dead. Oh! Don't say that! She was taking pity on us last time! Don't say thank you, please! Show some self-respect! Emmy seems flustered by my words, screaming uncomfortably. Don't be silly, Hisao. Oh god. Don't be silly, Hisao. I'm losing her voice. Damn it! My hatred for her is high. Someone had to haul you out of here, didn't they? And it's not like you're not doing anything for me, right? What? I need a running partner, remember? See, this, this is the motivation. She's not doing it because she wants to. She's doing it because she needs to. I shake my head, still pointedly not letting go of Emmy, who stops squirming and merely looks up at me with a quickly deepening blush that almost seems out of character. No, that's not true. You wanted a running partner, but you didn't need one. Don't say that, please! If I hadn't shown up the day after the festival, you would still run, right? Oh god, please don't make me look like a cynic like, a, like you did in Emmy's arc. Ugh. But it doesn't work the other way around. I only managed to make it out a few times before the festival. And without you, I probably wouldn't have made it out at all after that. I did not hear your logic. Emmy smiles at me and prods my chest with one finger. She's killed us. You are pretty lazy, sir. Hey, I was giving you a compliment. Well, you're welcome, I guess. You guess. I'll pay you back somehow. What? What? Pay back? What? 
Oh god. Well it can be as worse as Infinite Game Studios episode zero. Thousand pounds month for each of the girls. Two thousand a month. Oh oh uh well that's not necessary, you know, thank god. I mean I kinda like you kind of. And being able to run with you in the mornings isn't exactly a bad deal for me either, so as someone who gets so much praise, she seems uneased, unused to gratitude. I can't think of anything else to say, so we fall silent. I become aware of Emmy's breathing, of the dampness of her clothing, and of the scent of her. Coming off of anyone else, it would stink. Lovely. Coming off of Emmy, it fits her in a way nothing else could. Right. Her skin is cool. Yeah, cool. Slick with sweat and the breeze causing goosebumps to rise. Almost without thinking about it, I lean down and meet Emmy's mouth, which has already moved to meet my own. Her lips are soft, that kissing face is freaky, and she hums happily as we kiss, sending vibrations from her mouth to mine. There's a startling rightness to everything about this moment. We fit one another perfectly. The kiss ends and I finally let my arms drop back to my sides. Back on my mind. Emmy is smiling warmly at me and giggling again. Come on, sir. We better go see the nurse. Oh, you son of a... Fair to close your eyes. As she turns to begin walk, wait, what? It's her. As she turns to begin walking, she gives out a tiny yelp and stumbles forwards. Oh, nothing like having proof for being right. Emmy. <laughs> and that sounded totally sadistic. I do apologise. To Emmy, to any Emmy fans that were offended by my sudden excitement. Of course, it, it, it isn't nice to see a girl in pain, of course, but yes, my hatred is strong for her. I leap to steady her and notice with some concern that she's favouring the same leg as last night. Your leg. <laughs> you, we, you dropped the ball on yourself, woman. Emmy seems panicked and pushes away from me. Bollocks. It's fine. Hey, I thought he was the one that was going to have the problems, but no, it was you. Your leg. My expression must seem hurt because she hasn't hastens to apologise. Sorry, sorry. Didn't mean to push you like that. Please. I was just lying through your teeth even now. She stumbles for something to say. It's nothing, really. What? I did click press, didn't I? Press Emmy. Yes, I did. So shouldn't this affect it in some way? Like saying, right, we're going to the nurse. No, it's no buts. Come on. Checking you over. Come on. Hey, don't worry about it. She's so flustered, I decide to shrug the whole thing off. You stupid. But there's a cold feeling in the pit of my stomach now that, now that won't go away. I tried to step in and help her, and she pushed me away. Smiling, I shoved those thoughts to the back of my mind, then concentrated on Emmy. I just don't want you getting hurt, that's all. Well, she hurt herself. You don't have to worry about me. Honest. Stubbornness. You're not... Who else is irritated by this? Yes, you say that, but I don't believe you. Then why are you saying it? Why won't you tell me what's wrong? Why are you saying it aloud? It's like she's... It's like she gets offended by my trying to help. What am I supposed to make of that? Tell the nurse. Oh, nursey boy! I'm still trying to sort out what happened on the track. I hope the window's fucking closed. Oh? I'm still trying to sort out what happened on the, what happened on the track as we arrive in front of the nurse's office. Right. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Emmy raises her hand to knock, hesitates, and turns to me smiling guilt guiltily. Hey, can you do me a favour? She's going to ask us to lie, you watch. But of course. Can you tell the nurse that I'll see him later? 
You little! I just remember that I've got some stuff to take care of before class. Lies. If that's... If, lies. Just turn around and say, if that's the case, why didn't you go instead of coming here? Sorry, I really need to get moving. I peer at her closely, and she fidgets under my stare. Yeah, she's clearly just avoiding the nurse. Uh, uh, thank you, Watson. That leg of hers. Well, whatever. I said I'd help, and so I will. But I'll make damn sure she sees the nurse before the day's out. Fabulous. Yeah, okay. I'll let him know. Emmy looks like I've just given her a pony on Christmas. Thank you so much. You're the best, Sal. I am rewarded from my comp com complicity in her lie by a kiss that makes it all worth it, or so I tell myself. As Emmy heads out of the building, trying hard not to let her limp show, I knock on the door of the office. Tell Nursey Boy, come on. Ah, oh, Hisao, come in. I didn't know it was Hisao. I don't see Emmy with you. She's not sick again, is she? Well, he could say that. From the tone of his voice, I don't think the nurse is expecting me to say, yes, she is ill. Yes, she's ill. Uh, she said that she'd forgotten to do something, and so she had to skip out. But she'll see you later today. The nurse heaves an exasperated sigh. Honestly, that girl. Hmm? She's been avoiding me. She has! Well, here's how we have to tell him now. Yesterday, she was in and out of here without even taking off her prosthetics. And now this. Well, at least it's not just M. It's not just me, Emmy doesn't want worrying. That's a comfort, I guess. Still, I feel like I should say something about her leg. I said I'd lie for her, but she really needs to see him. Right, we should use our blackmail. Now that you mention it, she was limping pretty badly today. And last night as well. The nurse's eyes narrow at the words last night. And what exactly were you two doing last night? Well, it wasn't really night time when we got back, so... We were uh, on a date. <clears throat> the nurse raises his eyebrows as if surprised. Really? Interesting. Huh? Oh, nothing. His gaze turns thoughtfully and then he, he grins at me. You don't think you could use some of that boyfriend charm to get her to come see me today, could you? Of course. <laughs> I was planning on doing that anyway. I think she's really hurt and just pretending she isn't. Mm, yes, she does that. Afraid I'll make her stop running. Will you? I don't like to, but if it's bad enough that she's been limping, well, I guess I'll have to see what's wrong for myself before I make that call. I see. Emmy's n Emmy not allowed to run. Perish the thought. Perish the thought her health is in danger. I don't know if she'd be able to function without running. Can we confiscate those running prosthetics? <laughs> I mean, is that allowed? Or is that against, like, human rights? No wonder she's reluctant to admit anything's wrong. Well, I'll make sure she sees you. Good. Oh, and before I forget... He grins at me in fa in what feels like a vaguely threatening manner. Oh god, he, he deals with our pills, Asar. We are screwed. Don't forget that I know what medications you're on. Oh. You be careful around Emmy. Got it? Wow, he looks serious too. Of course, he's like a fatherly figure. For her at least. Got it. Don't hurt Emmy. Wouldn't dream of it. Grand. <laughs> I'd hate for you to be late. Huh? Late, as in the late. Oh my god! <laughs> oh. 
For all the boys out there, never date the girl that has a nurse for a father or a nurse for a friend or a doctor, whatever. Late, as in the latest sound of the guy. He frowns briefly, dissatisfied. Oh god, sounded better in my head. <laughs> well, at any rate, get out of here before you miss your first class. You got things to do, I'm sure. Shoot. As I leave, I notice the nurse pulling out his phone and dialing a number. Michael, your daughter's being a pain in the ass again. Me, I c Oh, it's their mother. Yeah, that's obvious. That your daughter was a big, big selling point saying that's her mother, but I forgot the name. I'm so stupid. I'd better... I'd better head back to my room, or I really will be late. Hey, wasn't he supposed to check my heart rate? <laughs> Beautiful! The lunch bell sounds and I bring myself out of the stupor. Yeah, I slipped into during the morning's, morning's classes. My lack of sleep last night, coupled with the increased pace of this morning's runs, run, has left me a little exhausted. Oh, thank God for that. Despite that, I find myself skipping stairs up to the roof. There's a thrill of excitement now, in addition to the pleasure one gets from eating lunch with one's friends. Blah! True, both Emmy and Rin are still my friends, but Emmy has become more than that now. Rin is back in her usual spot on the roof, almost as if she'd never been absent. She probably wasn't. <laughs> That's beautiful. Feeling better, I take it? A raised eyebrow is my reward for speaking. Better than what? Uh, better than you felt yesterday? Rin gives my question some serious thought. I'm not sure. I think I might have felt rather good for some of yesterday. But it's all fuzzy. <laughs> she downed all those pills. Too much cold medicine? Well, I was asleep, and that usually is pretty good. But I can't remember what it feels like to be asleep, because I'm not conscious for it. It's a real problem. Then again, if I knew how good it felt, I might not sleep anymore. But this way I keep trying, so I guess that's how I can keep from being overtired. An internal mystery to keep you sleeping at night? <clears throat> Maybe mystery is the wrong word. Intangibility might be the proper way to describe it. Intangibility? I see. No, I don't see at all. I have no idea what she's talking about, but that's okay since I really do. Do you remember what sleeping feels like? Like yesterday. Do you remember what you felt like sleeping yesterday? Well, I actually didn't get a lot of sleep yesterday. Hmm, maybe that's because you remember subconsciously. Actually, I think I was worrying about Emmy. <clears throat> Doesn't Emmy worry about enough about herself? I hadn't considered that, but it gives me pause. True, but would she ask for help if she needed it? <clears throat> Rin frowns and I raise an eyebrow. Will I get a proper answer? Probably not. Is it something she should be asking for help with? Her leg, for starters. This seems to catch Rin's interest. Leg? <laughs> that face! <laughs> She's just like, leg? She doesn't have legs. Are you up? Are you high or something, it's out? It's hurt, but she won't see the nurse about it. Rin shakes her head in disapproval. You never make her. You have to make her. Oh, there we are. Like she makes me go to class for her own good. Otherwise she could lose her legs again. And that's just too weird. Losing things twice. Especially if you don't find them again to begin with. <clears throat> Unless prosthetics are the same as finding something. But that's a different kind of lot lost, isn't it? I think so. <clears throat> hmm, I wonder. 
Oh, I was enjoying my chat with Rin. Why did you have to drop in? That surprisingly rhymed. I was enjoying my chat with Rin. Why did you have to drop in? <laughs> Wonder what? Oh, God. <clears throat> We're probably going to say, Nothing at all! And then Rin, champion Rin, is probably just going to be like, Go see the nurse, you stupid bitch. <laughs> Every seems to have snuck up on Rin and I, though Rin doesn't seem especially surprised, which is itself unsurprising, I suppose. <clears throat> Rin manages to sit herself upright, quite expertly, throwing her upper body forward and using her momentum to right herself. <coughs> Your leg, how does it feel? That, oh god, there we are. That earns me a frown and a bit of a glare. It's okay, I think. Not worth worrying about. Tell that to the nurse. He's quite insistent that you visit him, you know. Emmy pouts like I've just told her she's been grounded. He worries too much. But he is a nurse. Worrying about people's health is his job. It's not a big deal. Just a little soreness. Dogs wash. I try to resist rolling my eyes in exasperation. If it's nothing, then you should have no problem in seeing him, right? Oh, Sal. Beautiful. Emmy narrows her eyes suspiciously. Did he put you up to this? Oh, you stupid! <laughs> well, maybe. A little. But that's not the point. I would have reminded you to see him anyway. Yeah, that's true. It would be terrible to see you really hurt and not doing anything about it. That would make it worse, and I don't really want to see you hurt, you know? Go me crazy, but I kind of would prefer to see you happy... And healthy. With each statement, Emmy frowns fades a little more, until eventually she's grinning, al albeit a little shyly. Albeit. Well, if you're going to put it that way, then I guess I'll have to see him. Otherwise, you'll keep worrying and then I'll never hear the end of it, right? Exactly. That's right, I'll keep bugging you about it and that might put a damper on our dates. How's the food, Hisao? Talk to the nurse, Emmy. How was your day, Hisao? Talk to the nurse, Emmy. Hisao, I think I'm ready to go all the- Oh! <laughs> Champion! Talk to the nurse, Emmy! See? It doesn't work that well. Oh, that final one. Champion. Emmy giggles at my high-pitched rendition of her own voice and gives me an affectionate shove. My voice isn't that high, jerk. I thought it was pretty accurate. <laughs> oh, is it frozen? No. Emmy and I stare at Rin for a while before I burst into laughter. Emmy crosses her arms and huffs mock offended. You're both jerks. Such vile... Ca calum calumnies for you, young woman. What the frick? I'm stunned that you would call me, of all people, a jerk. Honestly, I just... I don't know what to think. Emmy sticks her tongue out at me. <clears throat> you ass. So Rin, how's that art club these... How's the art club these days? Rin seems... Rin seemingly as surprised by the situation and sudden change of topic as I am. I take him... It take, takes a minute to think before answering. I believe it's okay. Although, no me, I keeps telling me to work harder. But I don't think he understands my methods. He's always stuck, st struck me as slightly creepy. Rin ponders a statement for a while. I've never really noticed. But I don't pay much attention to him most days, so maybe that's why. How often do you meet? Thinking of joining us out? Me and Art? No, don't mix. That's a bloody shame! I could draw my beautiful characters. Oh god. I could turn Life of a Sinner into a manga. Oh, that'd be glorious. But 
Of course, that would never happen. Me thinking of wanting to turn into an anime. Now that is just like... That'll never happen. <clears throat> what? Nah, I've already been... I've already decided to join a club. Science club? Really? Which one? Well, it's not really much of a club, to be honest. Oh, you joined the tea club. Ooh, there's a tea club? No, I uh, joined the science club. I think. Back up, tea club? I wouldn't mind that. Sitting down and drinking tea. Oh, with their biscuits. Amy looks highly confused. We have a science club? Uh, not really. It's just me. Hey, Sam, that's not a club. That's sitting in your room reading books. No, I mean, it's just me and Muto. I'm just the only student so far. Muto? Really? A thought strikes her. Oh, is that what you were talking about yesterday? You're meeting with Muto? Yeah, that was our first meeting, I guess. Emmy giggles. Nerd. Hey. Hey, I can't help being clever. You bath plug. You know, I could have used your help years ago. You should have had a heart attack earlier in, your, in life, Sal. Killer! I laugh and then realise this is probably one of the very rare times I've laughed about my heart attack. Black comedy at its finest. Hindsight. Yeah. The ringing of the bell ends our conversation. Hmm. Guess we better go. Yeah, I guess so. Come on, Rin. You too. Rin has apparently begun to doze off, so Emmy gives her a sharp bump. I almost had it. Sorry, but you need to go to class. I disagree. But maybe if I nap in class, I'll get it this time. Change in location is sometimes helpful for that kind of thing. Neither Emmy or I bother asking what it is. The feeling when you sleep. That's what you were talking about. As we arrive at my class, Emmy gives me a quick kiss and heads down the hallway, rin in tow. Oh, for the love of God, I'm... Oh, God. I'm going to end it off here. And I'll be back after I get my water. Good day! I hope I put this in the right folder. I did! Good day!